Hi everyone, it's Anne-Marie Cross here, the podcasting queen. Wanted to pop by today to share a couple of tips around how to become a disruptive voice in your industry. Over the weekend, I spoke at Motivating Mums Expo. It was fantastic, met lots of really great women in business and even men in business as well. And some of the things that I heard people talking about, as well as kind of the uh, consensus going around you know, with colleagues and, and other clients that I've been speaking to, they're really struggling to get their voice heard. So I wanted to come on. I've been thinking of, um, today about a couple of things that we're doing with clients that I've done myself that I've also heard uh, some of my guests speaking about on the podcast, my, my podcast, The Ambitious Entrepreneur Show. So I wanted to share that with you so that you can start to think about that as well, do some brainstorming and see whether you can also get an edge to the message that you're sharing so you can become the disruptive voice in your industry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is working. I'll share it across my personal feed as well, just in case there's people that are online and can join us as well. This is something that many people struggle with. If you are joining me today and let me know where you're from so that I can say hello uh, and yeah, welcome you to this live. going to be a short and a sweet sweet live although sometimes when I start talking and I get in the zone who knows so if you are joining me live today let me know where you're from say hello so that I can uh, say hello back so yes yeah, so this is all about how to become a disruptive voice in your industry and I think for some people the, the whole term disruption can be a little bit confronting particularly when you think of companies who have disrupted their particular industry if we look at um, Airbnb certainly disrupting the hotel and tourism business aren't they I'm sure you've heard of Airbnb I'm sure you've heard of Uber as well who are disrupting the taxi industry now whether you believe or you support them that's not that's not today's topic but what it is really thinking about especially for service-based businesses is who I work a lot with you can be if you're a service-based business you can be entering a market and if you're a life coach or a career coach or a consultant I'm sure you have got many other people who are also working in your space and so you can be one voice among hundreds and if you are working with clients on an international scale or location does not matter so you're using technology and you can then work with people nationally or internationally that means that you have now well, certainly opened up the the marketplace for you to potentially work with the potential clients but then of course your competitors or the people who are offering similar services to you has also expanded and I think today there's so much noise on the internet and online that uh, we need to really spend some time in differentiating our message our voice so that we really do stand out now I wanted to share with you a I am going to write it here, this resource. .com. Let me just check that. I want to make sure that I have internetlifestats.com. This website with you. And I want you to go and look at it after the live. Not now, but after the live. This particular website here, when you click through to it, says Internet Live Stats. In real time, it shows you a number of different figures. For instance, there's 3.6 billion users in the world, Internet users in the world, 1.19601967888. 
it just keeps increasing. 1.1 billion total number of websites, 169 billion emails were sent today. There was 3.7 billion Google searches today. There was 3.5 million blog posts today, 478 million tweets sent today. That's a lot of content being shared online isn't it so if you've just sent a blog or written a blog you've probably spent hours on it I know I often do if not days tweaking it till it is just right and posting it and you're so proud of it but guess what if you wrote a blog post today you're three you're one of 3.548 million blog posts and that's just clicking over and over again so go and check out that site internetlivestats.com so what does this mean it really means as i said you need to be very mindful about the type of message and to how you're going to be disruptive there's three different ways that um, you can start to consider about how can you disrupt the voice or be the disruptive voice so that you can become known as an influential uh, person uh, within your industry And the first one is around the experience you create. Now, there's a lot of different things that you can break down down into and we we focus on when we talk about the experience. But an example that I wanted to share, and I can't remember which guest it was. I think it's the guest that's going live this week. He's also in the marketing space too, and his name slips my mind. I had so many guests on podcasts, so please forgive me if you're listening to this. By the way, I see that there's three of you listening Pop down where you're from, what country you're calling in or your town you're, you're calling in from so that I can do a shout out and say hello. So the first one we're talking about being disruptive is the experience. Can you create an experience with your ideal client or even how you're sharing your message online, offline in a different way that is quite unique and quite special in the marketplace? And the example that this guest was sharing was a company in the U.S., uh, provided dog food. So this was a product-based company. So they provided dog food, sold dog food. What they did, you know those big, big, big signs that you see on the side of the road? They're not called banners, but they're very big placards that's, you know, with big posts on the side of the road. Calling from Australia, Bin Bin. Hi, welcome, welcome. Um, what industry are you from? Let us know. Type that in it there as well so that um, we can see what kind of industries everyone is coming from. Um, so this particular dog food company, what they did was on the side of the road, on the big banner or those placards, hi Michelle, they had a dispenser which would dispense a sample of their dog food. Now, I don't know if the dog, their, you know, the owner's dog had to do something like sniff it or what they had to do, push some buttons, but it was very simple. So if you went up to that placard, that board, did something, out would pop uh, a sample of the dog food. Now, I don't know about you, but that is so unique. Bin Bin, you're in the health industry. All right, let's see if we can come up with some ways on how you can disrupt. Share with me what what... What uh, speciality are you in in health? Let's see if we can do some brainstorming around what might be a unique angle. Or maybe you have created quite a unique experience within your industry that therefore your voice is kind of disrupting what other people are saying in the industry as well. Share that for sure. I think this is a really great space to be able to learn and help other people brainstorm as well. So what experience can you create that's quite different? I mean, you don't necessarily have to go out and create a big billboard that, that's quite interactive. Another experience that I was sharing with this particular guest um, in my industry, I mean, I'm a brand and communication strategist, my background in personal branding. However, now I specialise in podcasting and helping people get their message out so they stand out they be heard and create an influential voice in their field. Now, for many people who I'm meeting with, they may not be as educated as I am about the value of podcasting, the benefits, how podcasts, when when produced well, can support them in overcoming challenges to really engage with their audience. And there's some really incredible statistics and case studies too, which I have researched and found. So what I have done to create a different experience in getting that information across to my ideal clients is to create a podcast about podcasting. So in other words, my ideal client gets to experience listening to a podcast, so consuming that podcast and gaining valuable information in how they can then tap into that resource and leverage it for their business. 
So for you, it's looking at, okay, what is happening in the industry? What methods of communication or is there something that I can implement in how I deliver my particular product or service to be able to create a really unique experience and how that's delivered, how it's consumed, how it's interacted with, with my ideal client. So do some brainstorming around that. So that's the first way to consider to be disruptive have a disruptive voice in your industry that sets you apart from what everybody else is doing. So experience. The second one is a unique angle. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so you might find that as an expert in your field or as a specialist in your field, if you're a service-based business, you're providing expertise, information in a certain area. So it might be accounting, it might be a lawyer, it could be a lot of different things. So if you think about the typical way or information that is being shared in your industry, can you provide a unique angle to that information that enables you to solve a problem quicker, to cut through a particular issue or challenge anyway in that industry that can then set you apart so that you can talk about your particular angle in a very unique way that then can really catapult you and your services to a much higher level than what everybody else is doing. And I'll give you an example. I'm currently working with uh, with a PR and media expert over in the US. She's had, a goodness, a 20-plus year not only in, in uh, helping people get on TV and, and on radio through writing incredible press releases that get noticed by journalists, but she also has herself an expansive career in the TV industry. So she was a TV broadcaster as well, as well as a number of other areas of expertise in that area. So she has a really good insight in not only from writing press release and sending on behalf of clients, but also from the other side of the other side of the desk, if you will, from from TV producers, journalists who I'm sure have read she over her time have read tens of thousands of different you know, pictures and, and releases. And I also said to her, so consider that. Also consider the challenges and the changes that have been happening in the marketplace that um, if you think of the traditional way of writing press releases and how you approach journalists and so forth with all the noise and the clutter, are you doing something differently that enables your clients to really shine through all of the noise going on in, in the PR industry? And she said, yeah, absolutely. Oh, there's a number of different things that I do that I've tweaked, steps, processes that now make my system quite unique in how I'm helping clients. And so my clients are finding that they're not only getting an opportunity to speak on TV, getting articles written and being on the radio, they're actually becoming known as the go-to expert in their area of expertise because of the things that she now is helping them to do. So she's providing a unique angle and that really is disrupting and, and really setting apart her services. So you think about a way as well how are you doing things quite differently for me as you know if I'm talking about podcasting even though podcasting has been around for quite some time what's really new in the industry is that I'm now talking to executive CEOs really um, you know c-suite executives from corporations who are finding it really hard to disrupt their their market to really engage deepen the engagement not only with new clients but also with existing with, with existing clients but also with new clients they're finding that when competitors enter the market with a fresh voice and a new way of looking at things they're retaining um, you know the, the percentage of clients that they're retaining is really str- yeah, struggling in there too so podcasting is a really unique way that's cutting through that that's providing answers to those solutions so for me the way that I position uh, my products more packages and my services is very unique. So I'm kind of cutting through that noise and it's creating curiosity. Uh, And that's what you want to do. You want to create curiosity long enough for someone to go, hang on a second, there's something different, something quite unique. So can you think in in a way of, of a unique angle in what you are sharing and how you're sharing that to the market? So we had experience. Can you create a different experience that is quite unique in the way that you deliver your product or service? or even how you showcase it as people are getting to know you and getting awareness of you, or can you provide a unique angle to the content that you are sharing that really stands out, that separates you from what everyone else is doing? And the last one 
is really you. Because many people that I work with are service-based businesses, so they are the person who then speaks, consults, trains, mentors, coaches, uh, their clients. And you may be offering exactly the same services, expertise as many other people, but what makes you very unique is the style, the mannerisms, the characteristics that you bring to the table. For instance, maybe you're in, an, in the accountant, the accountancy field. Now, don't want to offend you, but you know what? When you're talking facts and figures, for some of us, we kind of go, oh, sorry, sorry, no offence. I mean, I know how exciting it can be to look at profit and losses and Boy, oh boy, you can get really excited about those balance sheets, can't you? You probably can, but for many other people, it may be, yeah, not so exciting. So maybe you are an accountant who, and I don't want to offend other accountants, but has a really funny sense of humour. So when you're talking to your clients, they actually have fun. Um, there's a bit of humour there. And maybe you're able to explain things in layman's terms so that it doesn't go right over your client's head or prospective client's head. But they actually, it makes sense. These figures that would just look quite, you know, make your eyes just want to go like that are actually making sense. So as a business owner who is speaking to this accountant who um, is fun and we can understand him or her, we can make some really solid business decisions because of that. So what unique characteristics do you have? It doesn't necessarily need to be fun, but how you share that content is very different. So it is a bit about creating a different experience. But quite often I think as service-based businesses who provides their expertise or service as a way to support clients through consulting, coaching, mentoring, training, we can so often disregard who we are, the experience that we've had, but more importantly, how we show up. And it can be that you consistently are on time, you consistently deliver exceptional service, you consistently inspire people when they've been in your company, or you consistently empower them, whatever it may be. You consistently support them in thinking bigger, and not only thinking bigger, but breaking through the barriers of doubt and, so, you know, that, that self-doubt and the, the, you know, disbelief that maybe they can achieve it. Whatever it is, if that is something that consistently people say about you, then that can be a really good sign that when you start to, with intention and with purpose, start to show up in that way as you continue to deliver your message, as you continue to share, as you continue to provide value to your community, that in itself is going to cut through the noise and because of that consistency. So people know that when they spend time with you, they're going to feel empowered. They're going to feel um, inspired. They're going to feel like they can just take on the world, grab their dreams with both hands and just, you know, take action to that. So I hope that was helpful for you. You know, this kind of thing, if you can't think of something straight away, please don't you know, beat yourself up. This kind of thing can take a little, you know, time for you to, to process, to think about. So again, experience. Can you create a different experience? Maybe have a look at what some other people are doing in other industries. Now, not that you want to emulate or copy them, but maybe if they're in another industry, you can then say, well, what can I do? What can I learn from that? Are there certain aspects of that different experience that I can create and that I can then kind of use within my industry or, or what I'm doing. So we've got experience, we've got that unique angle, and then, of course, you. you. You need to be clear and define that. This is the kind of stuff that I really love. And um, as I said, I was speaking to a few people and I thought, gosh, I've got to, got to, to, uh, to do this live. I mean, this is the kind of thing when um, the Podcasting with Purpose course, which launches, launches at the end of June, we'll be doing a lot more deep diving into this area because I know that for many uh, service-based businesses, they can struggle with this kind of thing because we're so close to our business, aren't we? And it's not till we get in a, um, a group where we mas mastermind and we brainstorm that we can really pinpoint some really key things that you've taken for granted. So uh, looking forward to, to sharing that too. Anyway, I have another live coming up on Wednesday at 8 o'clock 
8 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So we're talking about, again, podcasting, one of my favourite topics, but more about um, how often you should podcast, how you can come up with lots of great content ideas as a way to really continue to build that uh, consistent message. So I hope that you will join me. And if you've got any questions or any comments, please come and leave them on my Facebook page. I'm more than happy to answer them. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to leave it for now. I've got to go and cook dinner but thank you so much and uh, we'll see you Wednesday hope you can join me